Welcome back to English 4.0, the radio show. Let's go! Advanced. Welcome back. All right, welcome back, advanced students, to Advanced Class 31. Here we are in Class 31, and yesterday we were talking about numbers, and I... I, I said something which was kind of an exception to what we normally consider a rule that we never say S. We never pronounce an S after hundred. So we never say hundreds, thousands, millions. And that's true. We don't except, like so many cases in English, we have an exception, except when we're making a generalization, when we're saying cientos de personas, hundreds of people were there. Thousands of people were with us. Millions of people were uh, w protested the reforms, for example, okay? And I, I gave an example. I said 3.7 million people bought her new album. And you could say millions of people bought her new album, okay? 243 people came. Hundreds of people came. Hundreds of people came to the party. It was true. It's, you know, it is true. Hundreds of people came to the party. 2,894,724 dollars were spent on travel. Well, millions of dollars. Now, in fact, I should say was. Dollars are countable. How many dollars? But we don't normally say, well, how many dollars were spent? We say how much money was spent. A lot of money was spent. So we would still say was. Two, $2,894,724 dollars was spent on travel. So we could say millions of dollars was spent on travel. Absolutely. 433 drivers were injured. Hundreds of drivers were injured. 8,812 people received a prize in a contest, for example. Thousands of people received a prize. Thousands of people received a prize. Now, if we have a bigger number, say 57,253 people went to the concert. 57,000. We could say ten, we could say thousands of people, true. Or we could say tens of thousands. Tens of thousands of people went to the concert. We can say hundreds of thousands of people. The government spent tens of millions of dollars. It sounds very strange, doesn't it? But we do say this structure. Tens of millions of dollars was spent on research. Tens of millions of dollars, yes. It's kind of a strange structure, isn't it? But it's true. So let's move on. Let's move on. I don't want to dwell. I don't want to spend all day talking about that, that structure. I don't want to dwell on it. Dwell. D-W-E-L-L. -L. I'm not going to dwell on that too much longer, but it is in your student guide. So take a look in your student guide. There it is, class 30, page 36 of your student guide, of your advanced student guide. But I'm going to move on to spend some time because every, every point deserves some time. Even this point, incluso, even this point deserves some time. Absolutely. So if I say, for example, everyone on the team scored. The goalkeeper scored too. At Portero, the goalkeeper scored too. You could say, everyone on the team scored, even the goalkeeper. Incluso, even the goalkeeper. Yes. Everyone ate a sandwich. My brother ate a sandwich too. He had just finished dinner, and he came over, and he ate another sandwich. Everyone ate a sandwich, even my brother. He has such a big appetite. Everyone got sick on the ship. The captain got sick, too. Everyone got sick, even the captain. Incluso, even the captain. Sick. When you get sick on a ship, it's motion sickness, right? You have motion sickness. We call it being seasick seasick it's probably the worst feeling i've ever had in my life i've been seasick three times terrible experiences every time the first time was when i was on a ferry boat crossing from canada from 
uh, my province crossing the Bay of Fundy to Maine in the northeastern United States. The Bay of Fundy has the greatest tidal variation in the world, which means from the low tide, the marea bajo, baja, I suppose, to the high tide, is the greatest difference from high tide to low tide. The tidal change, the tidal differential, is the greatest, is great, it's greater than anywhere in the world there, in the Bay of Fundy, which is in eastern Canada. And when you cross the Bay of Fundy, you can you get to Maine in the United States. So the, the anyway, we were crossing there. I was going to Maine in a ferry boat, and it took, uh, at that time, they have a modern ferry now, but I was taking the older ferry, and it took about, uh, I think, six or seven hours to cross, and I got seasick, right? Seasick. So I have, mo it's motion sickness, and I experienced this, and it was terrible, and yes, I hate to say it, but yes, I was vomiting. It was very, very uncomfortable for several hours. Terrible, terrible feeling. In fact, it, even when you get off, you still feel sick for, for hours after and at night, and it's a terrible feeling. So I was seasick. This is interesting because we have the word dizzy, mare, mareado, also. But dizziness is, dizziness is more in the head. Dizziness is when you're rotating. If you rotate too many times and you stop and you feel like you're spinning, you're dizzy. But motion sickness typically affects your stomach, right? It affects your stomach and it makes you feel you have an upset stomach, right? Motion sickness. So you could be car sick or you could be seasick. I was seasick when I was on that ferry. I was seasick. Car sick is when you're in the car driving from Covadonga to Cangas de Onís, on the road, and the road is very windy. It's turning left and turning right, sharp turns, and you, you say, oh, can we pull over? But the road is too narrow it, up there in Asturias. You know what I'm talking about? The road is very narrow, and it's windy, left, right, left, right, sharp turns, and you feel sick to your stomach. I hate it. It's a terrible feeling. Anyway, my example here with even, everyone got sick. The captain got sick, too. Everyone got sick, even the captain. And when I was seasick on my ferry, well, on that, not my ferry, on that ferry, I was with my friend who is now a ferry boat captain and who actually, uh, about 10 years later, 10 years later after being sick, my friend who was with me that day and who also got sick, he became the captain of that ferry boat. This is a true story. And now he works as a ferry boat captain in Trinidad, Trinidad and Tobago, back and forth every day. Very interesting job and a very interesting guy, my friend Greg. Anyway, um, okay, everyone fell asleep during the speech. The master of ceremonies fell asleep too. Everyone fell asleep during the speech. Even the master of ceremonies, incluso, even the master of ceremonies. Yes, because it was so boring. I felt hungry. Or everyone felt hungry. I felt hungry, too. Everyone felt hungry. Even I felt hungry. I was very hungry. Yes, yes, very, very hungry. Okay. Expression of the day. Yes. Oh, you heard it. Did you hear that? That's right. It's time for the expression of the day. The expression of the day today is catch my drift. Catch. Coger. Catch my M Y my drift D R I F T with a question mark. So this is really do you do you catch my drift? But it's an expression, so we say it quickly, and we very often omit the auxiliary verb, and we say catch my drift. But but it's fine to say do you catch my drift? And this means me entiendes? Do you understand what I'm saying? But it's very casual. You say, hey, she's a, she's a pretty good-looking girl. You catch my drift? You know what I mean? Hey, hey, you know what I mean? She's pretty good-looking. You catch my drift? All right. <laughs> okay. Do you know what I'm saying? ¿Me entiendes? All right, yes. ¿Me entiendes? Catch my drift? You know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I'm saying? 
So I can say, do you know, do you know what I'm saying? But simply, sometimes when we're speaking very casually, it's not good English, but it's very casual English, and you'll hear this all the time. N- know what I mean? We should say, do you know what I mean? It's a question. I'm confirming whether or not you, you understand me. N- know what I mean? Or, you know what I mean? But I should use the auxiliary verb, but I don't always do it. We, as native speakers, don't always do that when we're speaking quickly and casually. And in the case like, catch my drift? Hey, she, yeah, catch my drift? Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Do you, know, do you know what I mean? Right? We don't always use the auxiliary verb in that case. Okay. Now we're going to move on to something very similar to what we were just doing, but just the negative. So we, we practiced even. I said everyone got sick. The captain got sick too. Everyone got sick. Even the captain. And now in the negative. So we can say, for example, no one could eat the whole hamburger. My brother couldn't eat it either. No one could eat the whole hamburger. Not even my brother. He has a huge appetite, as you know. No one listened to his speech. The boss didn't either. No one listened to his speech. Not even the boss. Ni siquiera. Not even the boss. I can't understand what he's saying. I can't understand a single word. I can't even I can't even understand a single word. His accent is so strange. I can't even understand a single word. None of the books were read. The bestseller wasn't read either. None of the books were read. Not even the bestseller. Come on, it's a bestseller. Nobody... And then, you know, I imagine I bring a book for my friends friends to read and nobody reads it. Come on, guys, it was a bestseller. Not even... not even the best seller. They didn't even read the best seller. Incredible. Mm. Nothing worked properly. The demonstration didn't work properly either. Nothing worked properly. Not even the demonstration. Incredible. No one drove. No one drove to the park. Everyone walked. No one drove. The bus driver didn't drive either. No one drove. Not even the bus driver. Incredible. No one thought it was good. His performance. No one thought his performance was good. His grandmother didn't think it was good either. No one thought it was good. Not even his grandmother. Right? Not even incredible. Normally grandmothers are always proud of their grandchildren. But in this case, not even his grandmother liked the performance. Incredible. Okay. It's not hard, is it? Do you understand that structure? Even and not even. Okay? Vocabulary of the day. Yes, it is time for the vocabulary of the day. Para hacerse. ¿Cómo se dice eso? Para hacerse. Oh, bueno, para hacerse a forma de ser. To take after. To take after. People say I take after my father in many ways. So, forma de ser. Okay? So... We're talking about typically characteristics of personality here. I take after my father because we both like football. American football, or in fact, Canadian football. I like Can- my father loves Canadian football, and I love Canadian football too. I take after my father because we both like Canadian football, which is a little bit different from American football. And uh, if I had more than four minutes, I would talk about it, but I'm going to have to move along here. But... Um, to take after. I take after my father. In a lot of ways, I take after my mother as well. I think I'm, I'm, I'm a fairly patient person. My mother's very patient, and I'm patient too. I take after my mother because we're both patient. Okay? So, para hacerse a forma de ser, to take after someone. So, it's someone in your family should be, right? Someone in your family or someone that you spend a lot of time with, but typically a relative, you take after them yeah, because you, you adopt some similar habits or behavior as a result of um, being related to them or being exposed to them for substantial periods of time. Aparcamiento exterior. Parking lot, right? Parking lot. I put the car in the parking lot. Guijarro. Guijarro. Oh, I like that word a lot. Guijarro. Very nice word. That's my word of the day. Pebble. Pebble. Guijarro. 
And now, incapacitar. To incapacitate. To incapacitate. Yes, to incapacitate. Guardar un secreto. To keep a secret. Can you keep a secret? Can you keep a secret? I hope so. Can you keep a secret? It's good to be able to keep secrets. Okay, now it's time to move on. We're going to talk about asking questions. In English, preguntamos preguntas. We ask questions. We do not ever, ever say to make a question. Oof, hacer una pregunta. In English, preguntamos preguntas. We ask questions. I would like to ask you a question. How many questions have I asked you so far today? I've, prob I've asked many, many questions. I... I've probably asked my students. This morning I was teaching in a company. I, I was teaching classes. And I, I probably asked 500 questions today. I have probably asked, because the day is still going, I'm, I'm going to continue asking questions. I've probably asked 500 questions today. My students have asked me probably 500 questions as well. I've asked a lot of questions, and they've asked a lot of questions. I've asked questions to them, and they've asked questions to me. Do you want me to stop asking you questions? Or, or would you like me to keep asking questions? Would you like me to keep asking you questions? Have I ever asked you an embarrassing question on the radio? I've asked, probably asked some embarrass, my students some embarrassing questions. Not, not intentionally. Sometimes I ask them a question and I, I don't think it means anything, but maybe it's embarrassing to them. To ask a question. I ask questions every day. I, you can ask someone a question. We never say ask to him. No, 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 no. Ask him a question. I asked my brother a question. I asked him something. We ask each other questions. We have a question and answer period when we ask questions. If you would like to ask me a question... Go to the website, bauganingles.com, log into your account, and you'll see the area where you can ask questions to the teachers. If you have any grammar questions or problems, you can ask questions or you can send your comments through the feedback section on the website. If you want to ask me a question specifically, my name is Kyle, K-Y-L-E, like Kyle. K-Y-L-E You can say, I have a question for Kyle and you can ask me a question and I will answer your question. Feel free to ask me as many questions as you like. We're out of time so I'm going to leave you. Thank you so much for listening and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye! <laughs>